Our leader is going to make a, a speech in which he's going to set out our election theme and the main areas on which the Democratic Unionist Party will be campaigning in the weeks leading up to the election, a vital election for the future of Northern Ireland. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce the leader of the Democratic Unionist Party and the First Minister of Northern Ireland, the Right Honourable Peter Robinson. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, everyone. It's interesting that Nigel and I, who uh, probably live closest to this establishment, were the last ones to arrive, uh, nearest to church, furthest from grace, I, I think, in, in this case. After a generation of conflict, Northern Ireland is moving in the right direction. The general election will be another important decision day for Northern Ireland. While the issues may be complex, the choice is simple. The people want to see Northern Ireland continue to move forward to a better future, or do they want to go back to the bad old days of the past? Just five years ago in 2005, we were entrusted with a strong mandate to deliver for the people. And today, Northern Ireland is a better place because of it. In a few weeks' time, we will once again be seeking a mandate to keep Northern Ireland moving forward. In the cut and thrust of everyday politics, it is easy to forget just how far we have advanced as a community. But the votes of the people of Northern Ireland gave us the strength to make a difference. Even in the last five years, we have seen huge progress. The Provisional IRA and most other paramilitary organisations have decommissioned and turned their backs on violence. Republicans now support the police, the courts and the rule of law. And we have seen the longest continuous period of devolution since 1972. Now we have local people making decisions about what is best for Northern Ireland. That's a result of the stance that we took. Today most people can live normal everyday lives free from the fear of terrorism. Today people have a hope for the future that they have not had for generations. Last June, we had a disappointing European election result. But since then, we as a party have been involved in a sustained effort to connect with our electorate and to listen better to what they say and communicate what we do and why we do it. It's been a challenging, but ultimately a rewarding experience. The truth is that in politics, there are not always easy answers, and sometimes there are unpalatable choices to be made. While the European election result was disappointing, we did regain our seat, and once again, we retained our position as the largest unionist party. However, for the first time, Sinn Féin topped the poll, and we lost a slice of our support. It wasn't a good day for unionism. Splintered unionism, only helps republicanism. Since then, we have taken the opportunity to listen and learn from our support base and respond in a positive and meaningful manner. The feedback from across the unionist community has indicated a yearning for unionist unity. This is not just about winning more seats, but a belief that unionists working together can achieve much more than unionists working apart and all too often, unionists opposing each other. While none of us are blameless for the divisions of the past, we must all now look to the future. That's why I make no apology for making every effort to bring unionists together. Of course, until that happens, we will continue to advance our party case. But at this election, the potential exists to win back two seats from nationalists. It's still 
not too late, but frankly, time is running out. I have made it clear that in Fermanagh and South Tyrone and South Belfast, even though we easily outpolled the Ulster Unionist Party in both constituencies in the last Westminster election, we are prepared to agree independent unionist candidates, joint unionist candidates, or even sharing the two seats with the Ulster Unionist Party taking one and we taking the other. The DUP has been prepared to compromise and sacrifice for greater unionist cooperation. And I hope that even at this late stage, agreement is possible. Unionism can't afford these splits, while nationalism is uniting around Sinn Féin. It's too dangerous for unionism to be divided. That's why, even if it's not possible to reach a level of agreement before the general election, I pledge to redouble efforts in the weeks and months that follow. Throughout the United Kingdom, the expenses issue has done enormous damage to politics. As one of the MPs with the lowest expenses in Northern Ireland, if not indeed the lowest, and one who, like Nigel, was amongst the minority of MPs at Westminster who has been given a clean bill of health by the audit team led by Sir Thomas Legg, who looked over the last five years of parliamentary expenses. There might be a temptation on our part to argue that there is no reason to apologize for what has happened. Not so. No politician from any party comes out of this with credit. We focused and concentrated on other political issues and have to accept that we didn't act to alter the systemic defects surrounding the issue of expenses. And if what happened at Westminster was bad, what was going on at the European Parliament has been much worse. We all need to be contrite. We all need to apologize for our failure to act. We do. And indeed, we have put in place arrangements for our members of Parliament which go well beyond even the revised House of Commons rules. In a separate but related matter, I want to announce that the party continues to take steps to improve, develop and build its cadre of elected representatives. We have the confidence to take a further step. Our party executive last night approved a party officer recommendation that will mean any of our assembly members elected to Westminster will give up their assembly seats. However, the party believes that it's important, especially at this time with the prospect of a hung parliament, that the party leader should remain at Westminster. While personally, I made no secret of the fact that I would have been content to concentrate on the assembly, I understand that the access which comes with being a member of parliament is important for the leader of unionism, whoever that may be. In addition, all our members of parliament and all of our ministers will stand down from local government. The gaps left by these decisions will encourage and provide greater opportunities for those in our membership seeking to be involved in public service. The increased stability at Stormont, as well as the strength and cohesion of our assembly team, allows us to take these steps now. Despite all of the criticisms about devolution in Northern Ireland. I know that people want to see Stormont working and delivering. But too often, instead of progress, they see arguing and bickering. A four-party coalition made up of parties from right across the political spectrum is never going to facilitate a smooth operation. We want to move to a more normal form of government. But we recognize that in the meantime, we have to work with the present system. The desire to agree is always going to be easier in theory than in practice.